let's see how it looks. It looks pretty good, and there's almost no distortion in there, but I think it would be better if it were straightened out like this top piece. It'll end up making the texture so that it's there's a slight scale difference from the front to the back because this rear area is taller, but I think in the long run it'll look better, map better, and be easier to make textures for. So I'm going to do the same thing I did to the previous piece. Select one horizontal edge and hit L, then G, then right click, scale, vertical, tab 0, then select one vertical edge, hit L, G, scale, horizontal, tab 0, you can see that there is some compression up here in the front and some stretching here in the back, but overall I think it looks really pretty good and is acceptable. So I'm going to go ahead and move that back up, except for I did want a seam still right there in the front. So I can go back to edge mode in both windows, select one edge right there in the front, and with my mouse hovering over the UV window I can hit L and select just that edge and cut it. And now those two sections will display with a seam there. Uh, so when we put on a, a camouflage pattern you'll see that they won't line up here and that's actually my intention. Alright, so I'll move. I'm just going to go ahead and put these so that they're all on the same tile space. When you export you want to make sure that everything fits within that square. Within wings you can move it off and it'll automatically tile and understand but the exported version won't. Okay, so I can close that and that part's finished. So let me hide that and let's do the bill next. And I'm going to go ahead and select the hole and then shift control I to select inverse right click and right click again on UV mapping this brings up the uh, the new seam window and I'll just select the object and align to selection. Now on this the original real life cap has got a piece of fabric that comes around folds up the front and is stitched right along here on the top and this is a separate piece of fabric so I want to split that seam right where the fabric would split which is down here in the corner. I need to zoom in really close so that I can make sure I've got the right edge selected and then I'll hit L. You'll notice that this loop didn't continue on. That's because when it selected this edge, this was essentially an x-axis loop and these are z-axis loops uh, for the most part. And so it doesn't see that as a continuation of the same loop. It's not a problem. I can go ahead and uh, with that selected, I can go ahead and mark those edges for cut, deselect it, select the next edge in the loop, and we view and align to it. Okay, so I can just zoom in and make sure that I have the right edge selected and hit L and that'll continue it on and mark those edges for cut. Now do the same thing on the other side. And view, align to selection, deselect and mark edges for cut. Okay, that should be it and I'll right click, continue, unfolding. It'll think for a second and come up and those actually look really good right off the bat. And that's the thing that's, uh, again, the inconsistency. I'm not exactly sure why. I, I really like wings, and I really like the UV mapping feature. It does real well. But every once in a while, for instance, you would think that this would be a harder thing to calculate out. Uh, but it turned out real nice the very first time. Whereas uh, that easy cylinder going around the band of the cap actually took some work. Okay, I'll hide that. And the next thing is, is uh, the badge that's on the front of the cap. You can either select hole from the um, outliner menu over here or you can just select the polygon and then hit shift control I to select inverse, right click, go down to UV mapping, right click UV mapping and again it's way up in the air so it would have been easier if I would have moved it to the floor. There aren't really that many polygons for it to figure out where to stretch it evenly so I'm going to go ahead and cut these corners just to relax it a little bit. Imagine it was made out of cardboard or something. Slicing that would make it uh, lay down flatter. So I need to mark those for edges for cut and then continue unfolding. And it looks pretty good right off the bat except for it's, uh, it's crooked and uh, it's upside down. So let me rotate. 
Okay, looks pretty good. I'm just going to scale it down a little bit and move it in the corner. Okay. Okay, so next I'll turn off the visibility on that, and there's the cat eyes. There are two of them, but I'm actually just going to map one of them right now. Let me view, align to selection, and I'll select the whole. Shift Control I for inverse, and right click on UV mapping. And again, it's way up in the air, so, so I'll go to view, align to selection. To show you the difference, this one I'm not going to mark any edges for cut. I'm going to continue unfolding. You notice that just because it's it's got so few polygons, it doesn't know exactly where to stretch to make these uh, corners line up nicely. So, so it's kind of shifted into a parallelogram, whereas the badge turned out nice and neat. So I think it would be better if I go ahead and split those corners like I did on the front badge. So I'll select those, right click, go to cut, and it'll cut those seams, and then you select the whole object, and remap UV, unfold, and that looks really good. And I'll rotate it, and scale it down, so it's a bit smaller. Alright, and close that. Now it'd be kind of a pain for us to go and try to map this one to look exactly like that one. So, what I'm going to do, actually, is just select that object and delete it. And then what I'll do is I'm going to select this back face, the hole, turn on the rest of the cap so I can see it. Then what I'll do is right click, open up the context menu, and I'll right click on put on. Then I'll go into the vertex mode, select the vertex that's in exactly the same place but on the opposite side as the other cat eye and right click and it pops a duplicate copy of it right there. Now you notice that the UV mapping is identical on both. At this time actually I'm going to select all objects and put it back together into one piece and so I'll right click and hit combine. Now the reason why I did that is because now when you go to UV mapping and this time left click rather than right click now you notice that all the regions show up in the same UV window. And this way you can go ahead and scale them, move them around, and align them as, as you like. But one thing to note is here's that cat eye. But if you just click on it, you notice that it only selects one. That's because they're kind of one on top of the other. You could move it off to the side, and then you would have both cat eyes mapped exactly the same way but in a slightly different area in the in the UV map and uh, that can be handy if you want to be able to individually texture each one and if you had something like embossed buttons or complex machinery where you wanted to have exactly the same texture on every one of them that's a pretty good way to go but one thing you'll notice here is that the scaling's off. You've got real small texture area. It's actually a large texture area, but it renders as a very small texture area on the uh, on the object itself uh, for the cat eyes. The same thing for the badge, but the cap here is really huge. So uh, what you can do is select all the objects, right click, go to scale, and normalize sizes. What this does is rescale all the uh, UV mapped regions so that they represent um, you know, proper scaling on the actual 3D item, or at least fairly close. And as I said, before you output this, you want to make sure that everything fits within this just one tile. So I'm going to scale it uniform and make sure there's a little bit of extra room. And uh, I'll just start lining up stuff so that it's a little bit neater and doesn't have any overlapping areas except for the cat eyes. Now this isn't the best use of texture space, but uh, it could be made better if I were to split this top piece in half, stack it, and then I would be able to scale everything a bit larger. But it would have an extra seam on there that isn't on the original cap, so I didn't want to do that. Anyway, so now everything's moved to where it has a fairly neat uh, appearance on there. And everything on the cap looks like it's about uniform sizes, and it has really minimal distortion. Uh, there's a little bit in a few areas, but on the whole, I think it's pretty good.